and then the bloodline. Okay, now here's the fun, guys. Okay, now we got undead. And again, if we pop this out. Pop this out. You can actually see the abilities that we're going to get uh, down here. So notice that we get uh, Grave Touch. And these are our free spells. Now remember, we're not going to get all these. Because we don't get cast level 7, 8, and 9 spells. So these last three here, we don't get. But we'll get level 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Now, we get decent ones. Cause Fear, early on is useful. But you wrap the out level. False Life, 10 HP. Everyone can use more of that. Uh, Vampire Touch, 10 HP and damaging someone. And a spell that you're going to use anyway. Uh, Grasp of the Dead. This is an AoE move. The spell is enemy dead. That's what we're going to want. Uh, so that's a little, little undead horde. Grasp of the Undead is just an AoE. What do you like? Skeletons come up from the ground and like claw their fucking ankles and shit. Uh, but it's like physical damage. And it's a decent amount of it. You can do it like multiple times in a day. Uh, Ways of Fatigue. Literally a spell that uh, is not teammate friendly. But if I remember correctly, this, if they fail their save, they get fatigued. And um, then, of course, undeath to death. So if you're fighting undead, which, again, we're fighting demons and devils. They're not undead. That don't mean they don't summon undead. If anyone wanted to bring the undead horde on your ass, it'd be the devils and the demons. So the ability to wipe these motherfuckers out in mass would be useful. And these ones, like I said, we don't get those. But we do get this. Corporeal form. Uh, we do get uh, these two as well. Get Death's gift, where we have built-in damage reduction. Some cold protection as well. And it goes up to level 10 version of it. Which is not bad. Again, all that's just straight free. And way down here, one of us at level 20, immunity to cold, paralysis, sleep, ER5 slash dash, which means nothing penetrates that. Not that way. There's always a way around that shit. Uh, plus four morale bonus on same throws made against spells and spell like abilities cast by an undead. I mean, that's hard for undead to fuck us over. We'll get the uh, class skill and religion if we pick that one. Uh, uh, and if we have spells that affect things that are not. Uh, normally not affect undead because they're undead and not like living creatures. Now they're working because they're undead bloodline, supposedly. Uh, and this one's cool. Uh, I like the undead one. Uh, so team, if you're going to do a skill monkey, I did a build. Uh, feel free to go look those up. They're all in the unmodded version, so they should be viable in every one of these uh, playthroughs. Uh, but this was an interesting one for me. I, I made him a skill monkey, where uh, because he gets uh, familiar, it doesn't actually say it, I don't think. Uh, but like level 3 you get a free familiar and that familiar um, was a um, snake the snake familiar gives you like plus 3 persuasion plus 2 perception something like that uh, so we had two skills that we were already getting a buff on we had a class skill in stealth so we got a buff thanks to that uh, and then we had um, something else Yeah, two natural abilities for being a serpentine. Where, like, I want to say, like, level 9. Uh, snake's getting there, it is level 9. Plus 1 natural armor. Finally goes to plus 2 and, level, and plus 3. At level 13 and 17, respectively. We also get a bonus to saves against poison. Plus 2 going to plus 3 to plus 4. And then, keep reading, plus 2 to mobility checks. It goes to plus 3, plus 4 by level 17. So now we have stealth. Persuasion, Perception, and Mobility, getting a bonus. We were going to be Charismatic character, because again, you're an older sign, you had to be. We were going to be Dexterous, so again, that worked for Mobility and Stealth. And then there was a hop, skip, and a jump to make me a Trickery character. So we had Mobility, Trickery, Stealth. We had Use Magic Advice, Persuasion, and Perception to be some of our main stats. Now, the downside was, is our Athletics was crap, and we had nothing in uh, Knowledge, uh, Skills, or Lore Skills. Which is weird for an elder scion, but it didn't matter. I made him a skill monkey for that reason. He was going to be on the team, and the team was going to help with those things. I told you in that video, if that was a concern for you, take a bar. The spells that you got for free, and why I'm pointing this out is the spells are awesome. When you get a serpent fang ability, this is kind of shit. But for the free spells, hypnotism, a spell we normally couldn't get access to. Teammate friendly, AUE, locks down a lot of dudes. Then we got the late poison, a spell you normally don't have access to ever. Sign. So again, the fact that you can make yourself immune to poison or a teammate immune to poison at level 5. Yeah. Well, it's a nice addition. So that was sweet. Then you had a summons. Summon Monster 3. It was because of this summons and the fact that this delayed poison poisons in the game, like a stinking cloud and cloud kill spells we have access to, are poisons. 
They are conjuration spells. This is a conjuration spell. This, uh, which you don't get, but this down here, the Den of Vermin, is a conjuration effect. So, augmented summoning and superior summoning were violent options. So we made him a conjurer build. And the reason that was important is because while he was awesome at charisma, we still need those DC checks to land. But if it was conjuration spells, though, we can kind of slough on the charisma because conjuration spells, by and large, don't have DC checks. They're auto-hit. They're uh, effects that there is no spell resistance uh, routinely as well. So again, there's a variety of ways. Like there's summons, there's poisons, there's all kinds of stuff that it's an effect that's out there. So spell resistance isn't a thing. That's why conjurers are so fucking powerful. Uh, and having pets always is a boom. So that was an awesome spell for free. Poison was the only real letdown. Uh, but then they gave us this snake skin ability, which was fucking tits. Free armor, free abilities. Whole monster, nice paralysis spell. That's amazing. Transformation, another spell that you're probably going to grab anyway. Amazing. Then you get this little uh, den of vermin. You get some of your own little rat swarm, basically. Or snake swarm that just fuck the guys. It's just an amazing ability. You don't get it multiple times a day. I think you get like once, maybe twice. And that's it. But, so what? Still fun. And they can poison and distract. Just like when you fought those rats in Pathfinder Kingmaker. Same general principle. It's going to be hard for some of the bad guys to kill those fuckers off. It's a good distraction to get your team out and about and do what you need to. The ultimate ability down here. We're going to immune to poison. So what? I have that spell, but I suppose I'll take it. Immune to paralysis. That's helpful. Uh, we can have Serpent Fang on permanently. That's, I guess, something. Also, you get the, the Spirit Naga form. You can change into a Spirit Naga. So is a snake bitch. Giant snake body. Big female snake head. Or female human head on top of that snake body. And she screams and hisses a lot. It's kind of annoying. She's actually very strong, not very dexterous, which seems counterintuitive. Uh, but it was okay. You can still cast spells in that form. It was interesting. Uh, I didn't care so much about that, so much as I cared about all those other spells that we got for free. And again, out of those six spells, I would give that about a five out of five, uh, five point five out of six. That's how impressed I was with these spells. So this was a really solid build. Infernal Bloodline was a let me down, and this one could be amazing for here because again, you're fighting demons and devils, so why not be part devil yourself? Um, here's the downside. Notice how this here has a bonus to your DC checks of your charm sub school. Unless they've added the spells, there were no charm spells in the game. So, at least for the Elder Scions. Because you didn't have any enchantment spells you had access to. You could pick them up down here. That's level fucking 19, goddammit. Fuck that shit. So that's just lame sauce. So, whatever. Uh, you got this down here. Uh, additional class skill. Knowledge world. Um, corrupting touch. Eh. Uh, infernal resistances. That was something. Or protection from you know, fire damage and shit like that. Protection from good. I mean, how often are you fighting good guys? It's probably not something that's going to happen to you. It was protection from alignment. That'd been an amazing spell. This is shit. Scorching Ray, definitely worth. Cold Person, definitely worth. Uh, an ability called Hellfire, which is an AoE spell like ability. Amazing AoE damage. You get uh, Crushing Despair, an amazing AoE debuff. Mindfuck, an amazing spell. You can get a lot of really good stuff up in here. Uh, Hellfire Ray and Scorching Ray alone are, are amazing. So again, you're doing well. But the Infernal Bloodline smack of you wanted to be dexterous and you wanted to be a Raycaster type, which is what I think. We at least get wings, so that's nice armor and, and movement. We don't get these three spells, remember, but at the end, you become immune to poison and fire. You even get some acid and cold resistance. It's whatever. Fey Bloodline is another one of those weird ones. We're not even going to go into it. Elementals were fun. Uh, they are almost identical, just as a reminder to you that have never played this before. Reminder to you that, never played. To you that have played this before, for those of you that are new, the elemental bloodlines, there are differences. Notice the color changes here. So we have electric damage with air, earth becomes acid, fire is obvious, and water is cold. It's basically the same spells. The differences you'll see are shit out here. And of course the immunity. You're immune to cold, but not if you're fire. You're immune to fire if you're fire. You're immune to acid if you're earth. You're immune to electric if you're air. So again, some differences there. The air elemental gets immune to all this shit. Earth gets nothing. And I can't stress that enough. But they get so much fucking acid. It's just fucking amazing. So don't feel bad for Argentina. Trust me, Earth is awesome. Fire is, of course, the staple. Plenty of fire spells in the game. The fact that you're getting some for free is fucking sweet. Uh, Watcher. Cold damage is also another common damage type. Uh, they get some buffage here in that immune to combat maneuvers. Something that, again, that you think Earth would have gotten. Fire, on the other hand, gets nothing more than just you move really fucking fast. Which doesn't sound like much, but trust me when I say that, that movement in the open field anyway is amazing. 
positioning in the battlefield is all over the spot. Uh, but the other thing that about these that they don't tell you, or at least they didn't before, let's see if they talk about it. No, don't, don't say shit. Okay, so let me explain how this works, because this is not in here, and if it's just like it was in Quarter from Pathfinder Kingmaker, you need to know this shit. Air, earth, fire, and water. Notice how, again, air is electric, earth is acid, fire is obvious, water is cold. Notice that they give you these two spells here. This is Burning Hands, but it's the electric version. This is Scorching Ray, but it's the electric version. Same with Earth. If I click it, you'll see it's acid versions of those same spells. Fire, it's just the normal spell. Burning Hands, Scorching Ray. This is fine. Nothing wrong with that. Water is cold versions of, again, those same spells. Now, why is that mad? It, it doesn't, except for Elemental Focus. If you're using Elemental Focus for cold, for example, you would get a buff to these two spells. Well, for this one, actually, because this one has a DC check, this one does not. So for your Burning Hands Cold, it would get a buff to the DC check because you have Elemental Focus Cold, you understand? If you had Elemental Focus Fire and had this guy again, you'd get a buff. Now, here's the thing they don't tell you about these four. There is a toggle for your abilities that allows you to take any elemental damage you do and convert it into the element of your uh, background. So if you're an air elemental, it would be electric damage. Yes, you get these two free spells. But now I can take, say, a fireball spell that I could pick and make it electric damage. So it would be an electric ball spell. The weird thing about it, and another thing they don't tell you, and again, unless they fixed it, that damage is still keying off of it being a fire spell. Why do I mention that? Because here's the thing. If you want to do electric, because again, maybe you're, you're a storm fetish. I don't fucking know. You like electric, electric's fucking cool. I'm not going to tell you not to play it. Electric's awesome, but there's not that many spells that are electric. Now, in this form, I can activate that toggle, and I can make any spell, cold, acid, or fire spell, and now it does electric damage. But it still keys off the original element for elemental focus. So, if you want to play any of these besides fire, I'd recommend it. And then I'd still tell you to take elemental focus fire. The reason that's important is because, again, if you take that fireball spell and make it an acid ball spell, the DC check would be keying off of it being fire still. Uh, these ones here are true electric spells. It says Burning Hands Electric. It will have the marker underneath it when you look at the spell in your spellbook. It will say, uh, like spell descriptor or something like that, it will say electric or electrical or electric electricity or some shit like that. Uh, that is your cue that Elemental Focus Electric works on it. But if you take Burning Hands, the, the generic Burning Hands, this motherfucker, as an Air Elemental, you can convert it into Electric Damage still, turn that toggle on, cast a spell, that's the Fire spell, it will do Electric Damage, but again, it'll key off of the Fire Element. This means that while they give you this for free, who fucking cares? Get the good one. Get the fire one. Now you have two versions of it. You have fire with the toggles off. You have electric or acid or cold, depending on which of these other three that you've picked, uh, when the toggle's on. And again, one elemental focus to rule them all. Fire. And fire is the most common damage type in the game. So, cold being the second. If you really want to have a good fire build, I would not play an elemental bloodline fire guy. I pick air, earth, or water, have fun with those motherfuckers, being able to turn it into a different damage type. And why? If they're from hell, if they're demons and or devils in this game, what are they probably resistant to, bitches? It's gonna be fucking fire. So, why not throw a little fucking cold their way? It's still a fire spell, but it's keying off of the fact that it's cold damage, but it's keying off of the elemental focus of it being fire, so your DC checks go higher. That would be some fun. Or, or, or acid, or again, as you feel. Be that fucking genie you always wanted to be, is my fucking advice to you. Air is an amazing one. Uh, water's fun. Earth is fun, too. I, I like them all. Uh, if it weren't for the fact that you get elemental body, uh, and you can get to choose what element you turn into, Earth being my favorite, I'd probably stay Earth. And let's face it, acid damage is not heavily resisted. Usually, when it is, you switch it back to fire and water, or cold, or electric. You know, because you'll have your lightning bolt spell, you'll have your shocking crash, you'll have your snowball spell, and all the other fun shit that, that falls under these other elemental damage types. Just shut your freaking uh, toggle off and make it go back from electric to back to its normal damage type and have some fun. Dragons. This is where the fun's at. Uh, you better believe I'm going to make myself a draconic build. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to go cold dragon with a white or silver. Fire dragon, they're kind of generic and obvious, but definitely fun. So you're going for red, you're going for gold, you're going to go for 
brass, I believe. Yeah. Bronze is electric, so it's blue. Uh, black is acid, so it's green, so it's copper. Uh, and any of those guys, depending on what element you associate with, you will do more damage with the spell that do that damage type. Again, fire being the best, so that's why gold slash red slash brass are the, the three dragons you probably want to play. Having said that, again, no wrong answer here. But definitely fun. I do like to split this up and do a 10-10 split. The reason I do a 10-10 split, for those of you that don't know, unless they patched it out of this version of the game, and Kingmaker still works, a 10-10 split for an Elder Scion, or it's a, let's say I'm a Black Dragon, like I was in the video before. I do 10 levels of Elder Scion eventually, not 10 and then switch to Dragon Scion. Well, I usually do 5, 10, and then finish off 5 with Elder Scion. But a 10-10 split of Elder Scion and Dragon Disciple. All these free spells that I answer down here, remember I don't get these three, one, two, three. But I get these ones, I get them all. See this dragon ability where I get extra armor and extra resistance to whatever element we're talking about, and acid is an element. I would get that. And it would not stop at level 10. See where it says a 15th level you get plus 40 or natural armor? I would get that because of the 10 10 split. Because it's Dragon Disciple, it merges with this shit. It carries it on if you will. Hell, I'll even in a 10 10 split, I'll finish with this. I'll be immune to acid, paralysis, sleep, and I'll have blind six out to 60 feet. Yes, a purist would have it too. A purist will have level 20 spell casting level. A 10-10 split will finish at level 17. Unless they give us those two feats and I didn't see them. So, it's a trade-off. I like the 10-10 split. I think the 10-10 split has a lot to offer. Go watch that video. It's an unmodded video. It would definitely work for this game. You will enjoy it. And the dragon, uh, the black dragon, is the one that I picked on purpose for that one. For two reasons. One, if we're going to be a subcaster, which we definitely would be with a spellcaster level of 17, spells that are... Uh, important where no DC check uh, or no spell uh, resistance and those usually happen to be acid spells fell within that category and that's why I went with the acid dragon didn't have to be black dragon I just liked him because he was evil but again I could have gone green I could have gone uh, copper up to you you can pick whatever alignment you want you can be a black dragon and be lawful good you can be a fucking uh, gold dragon and be chaotic evil it's on to you what alignment you are it has nothing to do with the type of dragon you are just know that it, it does dictate your, your breath weapon, and when you get to turn into a dragon as a free ability, thanks to Draconic Disciple, you will turn into the dragon of your heritage. So if you wanted to turn into a gold dragon, you should have picked gold goddamn dragon now. Uh, I like black dragon because, again, I think they look fucking evil. I do like the cold spells, so I kind of like white dragons too, and there's some decent spells out there, at least a spell out there, Snowball, that I'm thinking of, that has no spell resistance does hella damage 5d6 level one spell is a pretty good ranged attack spell and i like that and the fact that i get more damage thanks to this right here 5d6 going to 5d6 plus 5 that's a nice upgrade and again white dragons are fucking tits or silver dragons so again there's some fun to be had here with these guys and you get access to spells you don't normally have access to again you've got mage armor uh which you may think who gives a shit you're an over sign you have armor yes but when you turn into a dragon form you don't have armor anymore so you need to cast that spell on Drink a potion, have someone cast it for you, whatever. The fact that you get it for free, though, is kind of sweet. And you can cast that on other people. Resist energy, another spell you don't normally have access to. Spell magic, we just saw some fun you can have that already. Uh, we got uh, fear, that's an amazing spell. Of the three fear spells that are in the game that I can think of off the top of my head. Cause fear, scare, and fear, which is this one. Fear is the best. Because cause fear is like level one. Scare is like level two or level three. This one's level four. Uh, it's not because it's a higher level, it's because this one does not have a DC, or a DC, sorry, a um, HD cap. The other two, Cause, Fear, and Scare, uh, will not work once the characters that you're fighting have a HD higher than 4 or 5 or whatever the fuck it is in their spells. This one doesn't have that cap. So you can always fear somebody, unless of course they're immune to fear, that's always the thing. This is the one that never gets old. Spell Resistance, amazing. If they have it, why shouldn't you... And then, of course, the ability to turn into any kind of dragon you want, Dragon Time 1, anyway, is fucking nice. Again, go to town, cat. With you uh, doing a 10-10 split, spoiler alert, not only do you get wing, which is fucking sweet, and, and your um, power of the worms, whatever worm you pick, uh, you also um, not only get all your spells, uh, you also get the ability to have a dragon's breath. Uh, we get one in here as well as a purist, Elder Scion. Uh, with the Draconic Bloodline. They don't tell you that. They'll get another mistake with these tooltips. Uh, but 
that, that can be multiple times a day. And I want to say if you do the 10 10 split, you can do it like five times a day. And it's not a spell, it's a supernatural ability. Why does that matter? Well, if all these things have spell resistance, guess what? You don't get to spell resist. Supernatural ability, bitch. So, want to talk about having some fun? Spit some acid in that fucking devil or demonic motherfucker's eye. See how much fun he has. Fuck you, you asshole. Unless you're immune, you're going to fucking take damage. That shit's just fun. The other thing that you get from doing a 10-10 split that I thought was appealing was besides the plus 4 to strength, which most people would do a 16-4 split, by the way. That's fine, and it's a solid choice. The 10-10 split adds two more abilities to you. Instead of 4 to strength, you get 4 to strength, 2 to con, and 2 to intelligence. I know that don't sound like much, but extra fortitude, extra health, and extra intelligence, which means extra skill points, I think. I'm assuming that works that way. That's a nice upgrade for your character. At the very least, it gives you extra intelligence, which increases your knowledge world and your knowledge of the economy. So at least something for having the higher intelligence. And it feels cool. Plus, and here's the big selling point, for a 10-10 split at level 10 Dragon Disciple, you actually get this spell here as a spell-like ability called Dragonkind 2. However, it's limited to the dragon of your background. So I could turn into, say, Gold Dragon Level 2. Why is that important? I mean, who gives a shit? We have Dragon Kind 1 right here. Dragon Kind 2 is better. And we don't actually have access to 2 or 3. Remember, we don't get to be Sorcerer. We don't get to cast Level 7, 8, or 9 spells. So this is a Level 7 spell, spell-like ability, that you get for free for doing the 10-10 split. It is the, the ultimate of the Level 10 Dragon Disciple. And that's why you wanted that, in my opinion. So, Celestial Bloodline. This one's weird. There's some, honestly, like healing abilities in here, healing slash damaging abilities. A good way to detect evil, if I'm not mistaken, because this only works on against evil targets. Uh, let's see, this damage is divine against evil creatures, yes. Against good creatures, you can heal them, and this applies for your teammates as well, and doesn't have any effect on neutral creatures. So, if you want to know if something's evil, like say you have a smite evil uh, paladin on your uh, team, but you don't want to waste a smite evil on something that's you know, chaotic neutral. If this guy goes first, he can try to use his heavenly fire. It will cue and let you know he's not evil. It will not work on me. Well, now you know that's not an evil target. So you can click and go through and find out who's the evil targets for you to fight. And say, hey, Paladin, go smite evil that motherfucker. That's a nice little trick for you guys. I'll give you that one for free. Uh, you also get cool shit like you get cherubic wings. Uh, you get some, some clerical spell-like abilities. You get bless. Resist energy is nice. Protection from energy, again, you're really protected in this... Uh, celestial bloodline. Uh, aura of Heaven is a nice aura ability for you. Remove curses, something you don't normally get access to. Flame strikes a nice flame and uh, divine damage, I want to say. Uh, really, really nice AoE damage. Uh, greater dispel magic. And then again, you don't get uh, these three. However, you do get Conviction. This is not a spell. This is the spell. You don't get Banishment, you don't get Sunburst, and you don't get Summon Monster 9. You get Conviction, though, so you get built-in spell resistance for your character equal to 11 plus, it says your sorcerer level, it means from base. So 11 plus 20, so it could be a 31 spell resistance by the end of this build. Maybe higher. That's pretty fucking cool. Uh, and again, at level 20, your Ascension, you're immune to Acid, Cold, Petrification, and you have some decent resistance to Electric and Fire, and saves against Poison. This is not bad. This is very tanky. If you want to play a tank type character, Celestial Bloodline was fun. When I made the video for that one, again, unmodded, so it would work for this game. Uh, it was a halfling. That was a dex-based, charisma-based halfling, and we did not go all 20 in. We went 19 in because we did like a one-level sacred or scaled fist monk dip, if I remember correctly. So we were like a, a monk uh, that was like a little flying baby. So we were like an angel, a little cherub, going around monking it up, kicking some ass. And it was fun. It's not my best friend. But it was it was a good team player. Let's put that way. Abyssal. This is one most people are going to want to play, in my opinion. Uh, the Abyssal Bloodline is nice because of this right here. Strength of the Abyss at level 9, uh, 13, 17, you get a plus 2 to your strength each time. That's a plus 6 to your strength. That's an inherent bonus to your strength. So your strength right now uh, could have been 16, let's say, for a strength-based build. That's what I'd probably start at. Throw another 6 on top of that. You're at a 20 goddamn 2. Throw on some magical gear. You're up to a 30 at least. So you're doing real well for strength. You're a strong motherfucker. This is a really nice build for this. And again, gives you all the fucking cool shit that being an abyssal evil bloodline motherfucker would be. So you get your cause fear, cracking spell. You get your innate demonic resistances. Some 
resistance to electricity, who cares, and some poison save bonuses. Yeah, whatever. You get a spell you can give a rat's ass about, a little strength. Yes, it'll help your teammates, but chances are you're going to find plus four strength gear as soon as possible and give it to this character, right? Because you're all about your strength. Why wouldn't you? Until that time, at least you have that. You also get uh, Rage, a spell that's useless for you, because once you cast Rage on yourself, guess what? You can't attack. Or, sorry, you can't cast spells. Let's say it right now. Eh. Um, Stone Skin, that's a nice spell. Uh, Dismissal, another nice spell. Again, really, really good way of getting rid of extra player creatures like devils, demons, it's like you guys. And all the summons that come. Poof, go away. Uh, and Transformation, another amazing spell. You also get your Devil, Demon Wings, excuse me. Devil is the... Infernal uh, Devil. So this is demonic. Um, so again, this is you know, one of those fight fire with fire kind of scenarios where you go abyssal bloodline to fight all the demons that you're going to be kicking their ass. Um, notice how you get a bonus uh, added summons. This is the equivalent of the feat superior summoning, and you get it for free. Notice you don't have any summons though. You get one here, you don't have access to that. You get one here, you don't have access to that one either. So you would have to pick a summoning spell in here somewhere. And just a spoiler alert, this means summoning, a conjuration spell does not mean Animate Dead. Animate Dead is a necromancy spell. You can summon multiple skeletons. This has no impact on it, so don't waste your time. Okay? Unless they fucking borked it up in this one. But they didn't in Pathfinder Kingmaker. I can't imagine they'd fuck it up in this one. So again, this is only going to work if you get like your summon monster 1 through 6 type of stuff. And it doesn't work on level 1, summon monster, by the way, because it has to have more than one monster. It has to be capable of being summoned. So when it says one monster, it doesn't do shit. So we need like summon elemental. You only summon one elemental. This has no impact on that spell. If it says summon one to three dogs, where it could be one, it could be two, it could be three, now it works. And it doesn't work uh, only if it's two or three that show up. No, it's one D3 plus one. Now. So that means your minimum is going to be two, your maximum is going to be four, and I can prove that to you. So this works on those types of summons. And all the other summons too, like you, know, you have like um, the druid summon, what are those ones? The summon nature's ally. It would work on them, because again, multiple summons. So it has to be a conjuration spell, like the summon spells are, and it has to be more than one could show up. And guaranteed, one more will show up as a result. So it just increases the cap by one. And you may think that's not that big of a deal, but again, trust me when I say flooding the battlefield with four dogs versus three, it makes a difference. Again, flanking is set up easily this way, you've got an extra body to, to take damage, and again, the downside of summons, to, to, steer you away from being stupid and thinking that summons are the end all be all existence. If, and you can't imagine that the, the demons and the devils won't have this, if they have the cleave special ability, uh, one that allows them to attack multiple opponents in one combat round as long as they can range their big ass hog and fucking weapon, summons suck because they will mow down your fucking pets and then probably you and your team in the same swing because they'll have like improved cleaving finish where they just attack, 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 attack in like a big fucking circle until they run out of bodies to kill. They keep swinging, baby. So that's when you don't pull out the pets. Just saying. But this is definitely a strong contender. And again, your immunity to electricity, who cares, poison, that's useful. Your acid and cold and fire resistance 10, that's something. I mean, you'll take it. Uh, you get these weird abilities here. Uh, like you get athletic skill, but again, you're strong, so that makes sense. Um, you get some DR for your summons. Notice again, we don't have any summons. And again, the first summons you could get would be down here. You could get them here. And highly recommend you at least pick up one. Simply so you can capitalize on that. And I would recommend, of course, the level four, or five, or six version. Up to you as you pick. You'll have more casting of level four spells than five spells, more casting of level five than level six spells, so there's the reason for you to pick level four or level five. I would still pick level six. But that's the go-to. Arcane Bloodline, on the other hand, is what I'm going for. Now I know this video is taking forever just to get to this point, guys, but I wanted to show you all the other cool shit you could have done with your various maze builds. And again, just to point you back to my other previous content. This one uh, is a staple for me. Again, it can be a strength-based build, it can be a dex-based build, it's no preference. I, am, I like switching it up. I'll do a Raycaster build today. Uh, for the, the next time I play it, I'll probably do a strength-based, you know, corning and smash build with high charisma, just fucking low shit down, scaring the pants off of everybody, and shatter defenses and all that kind of shit. The reason I like Arcane Bloodline, let me walk you through why. First, let's talk about the spells. Match Missile, you're going to pick it up anyway, so the fact that it's free, fucking awesome. Visibility, not the best spell ever, but I've come to love it because there's times where you just need to be fucking invisible, walk around to the other side of the battlefield without being impeded in any way, shape, or form, and then beat something to fucking death, like the wizards and other kicking your ass. 
Um, you're going to get yourself to spell magic. Again, now that's an extremely viable option. Nice to see that they had the feats that are capitalized on the spell magic. Dimension Door, another spell you're going to get anyway. If you're not a wizard that can teleport from one side of the battlefield to the other, I don't know what the fucking kind of wizard you are. But this is an amazing spell. Uh, Break Enchantment, another one that's great, but not really for you so much as it is used on your team. There are times where it can be used on you. If you've been cursed, if you've been enchanted in a way where you still have access to your turn, let me rephrase that. Some, some spells will enchant you in a way where you break free from it, but then next round you'll be back under the effect. Confusion is one of those spells. It's an enchantment. Okay. Now, if you have access to your turn and you have access to this spell, pay attention to that shit. If you still see that you have the enchantment on you, the, the confusion spell on you, you don't want to be killing your team. Cast break enchantment on yourself. If you're lucky, you break the enchantment. Boom, you're back to fucking in it. Back in the thick of things. This is an amazing spell. Okay, so don't let me tell you otherwise. This one over here, amazing spell. True Sing. This is something that, from what I hear, the bad guys in this game have in spades. So again, notice how this ignores blur. It ignores displacement. You can see through illusions. So like, um, mirror image I don't think works for your character. So again, a variety of things just fuck you over because that was like your main protection. Boom, the bad guys have True Sing and now you're fucked. Well, they probably have the same kind of things, right? So why not get True Sing for yourself or your team? So again, free, you'll take it, you'll love it. That's not the reason you want Arcane Bloodline. Let me show you two, well, four really good reasons for Arcane Bloodline. Here's one, here's two, here's three, and where does it say it? No, no. Oh, here it is. Wait, wait, wait. Ah, sorry, I gotta find it. This one here. Okay. School of Power, plus two to one school. You get to pick what school it is. Basically, this is the equivalent of, of spell focus and greater spell focus all wrapped into one. And it will stack with those feats. So when I do the Arcane Bloodline build, you better believe I get a spell focus and a greater spell focus and something I give a shit about, like evocation. And then I pick evocation again here. That's a plus four to my DC check. To put that in frame of reference for you guys, okay? Let me, let me explain why that matters. Okay. Let's say we hit him with that evocation spell, Fireball. It's a level 3 spell. The DC check on it is equal to 10, plus the level of the spell, which we just said was level 3, so 13, plus your Charisma modifier, which we're going to max the fuck out. So that's 24, so going to be the best case scenario. We're going to be higher with gear, but let's just say 24. So I'd say plus 7. So 10, 3, 13, plus 7 is a 20. That's a, a 20 DC check. That, uh, oh, Sorcerer could get the same thing. A 20. Same with the Wizard. You could get a total 20 to their DC check. We just got 4 more. Two from this and two from Spell Focus and Greater Spell Focus. And you may say, well, the Wizard can get Spell Focus and Greater Spell Focus, and so can the Sorcerer. Yes, they can. Only the Sorcerer can get the School Power like we're getting. And it's because they have access to the same bloodline. So it's a way to us to, to be better than the Wizards. Just by DC checks, but definitely better. And again, by two points higher, that's a significant increase to make sure your spells land. Again, for frame of reference, take that level 6 spell. The best case scenario for us is the level 6 spell, right? Too higher is like saying it's a level 8 spell. Well, wizards and sorcerers can cast level 9, so we're not that far behind. You see my point? Yeah, we're not getting the cool level 7, 8, 9 shit that they get. You know, the badass spells, but whatever. There's some really good level 4, 5, and 6 shit in this game. So, we're still doing well. And we can go one further. Not only can I get school power for an element, or for a, a school, like uh, an evocation, and I can get... School focus for evocation and greater sp sorry, spell focus for evocation and greater spell focus for evocation. Make it a plus four, like I just said. Most of the evocation spells are fire spells. So I can get elemental focus and greater elemental focus as well. Pushing those fire evocation spells up two more fucking points. And yes, a wizard can do that too, a sorcerer can do that too, but what's the chances they would? So again, we're swinging like a champ, we got full fucking armor, we got really good weapons swing, we got buffs to our weapons besides, we got really badass spells, buff us and to attack with. You're the, the the gish. You are the gish. Embrace it. This is what you were made for, Arcane Bloodline. And I hear I get to see it. I hear we can actually pick two bloodlines. So we can pick Arcane and perhaps a Draconic one as well. Or a Draconic and throw in some fucking air, earth, fire, or water and have some fun with both of those fucking categories. What I hear about that is, and again, I could be completely wrong, so I don't want to give you too much information that could be mistaken, but what I hear is, for when you're picking stuff, like your free spells and your free abilities and shit, you have to pick and choose. What are you grabbing? 
Uh, for example, like the Abyssal Bloodline, remember at level 9, they get the 9, 13, 17, they get the plus 2 strength. Well, what did the Arcane get at 9, 13, and 17? A free spell. And this is not just any free spell. This is any free spell that you can cast, level 1 through, in this case, 3, 1 through 4, I believe. No, this is level 1 through 5. And this would be 1 through 6. Any one spell you can pick in those categories. And those are not just your mega spells. That's the entire wizard spellbook. That's spells you didn't have access to. And those three spells are fucking money. Now, yes, the other Magus builds, the Eldritch Scions, the Abyssal, and all the other fuckers, get six free spells, like just like that here. Well, so do you. So I get nine free spells to their six. And I get my nine, three of them, earlier than them. And there's some really good spells to pick up at level nine that you might want. Sense Vitals, Sneak Attack, Love, where everyone else would have to wait to level 19 to get that shit. I can get Sneak Attack going quick. And I have Invisibility, baby. Just saying, there's some serious fun to be had here. An Arcane Bloodline gives me everything I want, with the exception of some extra strength. So if I do Arcane Bloodline and, and say, a Draconic Bloodline and then do, like, a 10-10 split or some shit, the question will be, is do I lose out on these spells? Because if I lose out on them, then it's not worth it. One free spell is nice. I think we can agree that nine would be better. And I know we, for a fact, in Kingmaker, if you do a 10-10 split with a dragon, you don't get this, which is a bummer. Notice also the other thing you get for being a, a level 10... Arcane Bloodline. In fact, level 20. Uh, you pass all your concentration checks by default. This is less of a concern. But it is nice to know that it's not a problem. Uh, with an automatic success in your concentration checks. And that's, that's all that gives you. And again, that's not really that impressive. But it's nice to know that I am not going to start casting a spell, have someone punch me in the snoot, and then I lose my spell. Because chances are, by this level, I, is a really good spell, and I did not want to lose it. So it's nice to know that that's there, I suppose. But... Uh, okay, we need an arcane object, or we need a familiar. Now, we could get a familiar. The same familiar that we had before, the, the point to my favorites. Centipede are nice. Uh, let me see if I can show you why. Uh, the centipede, well, all the familiars you should see will give you a, a bonus to your perception checks. Plus two. And then they will give you either a bonus to your saving throw of one kind or another. Will, four, two, or uh, reflexes. Uh, chicken will give you, like, temp HP. Or, sorry, higher HP. Only three. Again, early levels, you'd be surprised how helpful that is. Uh, one of them gets you extra armor. That's the lizard, I believe. Yeah, natural armor bonus. And again, it's not natural armor enhancement, it's natural armor. If that's true, that will stack with other natural armor and natural armor enhancement. So that's a nice plus one there. Um, there's other ones that give you like bonus to skills. Athletics, uh, Fortitude Saves, Viper gives you the Persuasion. Perception, this is the one that you got for free for being the snake or the serpentine bloodline shows it at level 3. They don't tell you that, though. But it's a nice little freebie. Uh, and that's why the one I made the skill monkey. For this guy, though, uh, I'm not going to do any of that. I'm going to do the arcane bomb. What this does, it allows us to take any one spell that we had, level 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6, and just instantly get it back. Well, because we're spontaneous casters, that means I can get any level 1, or 2, or 3, or 4, or 5, or 6 level spell back. Which means I just open up a spell slot. Is what I'm basically telling you. So it's an extra spell of it. Think about it. Definitely good. Uh, class skill. Um, show us our skills yet. Uh, looks like we're missing perception, lures, and mobility. And that's it. So, uh, next. We already have that. So, you know what I'm saying? So, so, we need this one or that one. And honestly, I don't care about either. But since we're fighting demons, devil, or lord of the could be that one. Not that I'm the best one, probably, but I could. Free spell pick time. Now we get two spells. Now, for those of you that don't know, when you're a Magus, uh, spells that are melee touch attacks are your bread and butter. In this list, there's only two. Corrosive touch, shocking grasp. And it's because modders haven't added the other spells in. Uh, that's fine. These are the exact same spells that we had in Kingmaker, the vanilla version of the game. So if you play the vanilla version of Kingmaker, all this is old hat to you guys. Those two, of those two, um, corrosive touch is shit in comparison to Shocking Grass, because this does up to 5d4 damage of acid damage. This one does uh, 5d6 damage of electric damage, so it's better. Both of them have spell resistance, which I disagree on. I think this one should not have spell resistance, because it's acid, but whatever. Um, and they all have to be touch attacks, but they could be channeled through your weapon. I'm going to get rid of Corrosive Touch, though, and I'm going to grab... Yeah. 
shield spell. I want a shield spell. I gotta go back. Oh, you pricks. Come on now. Don't do this to me. How do you cancel it? Oh, it's just being glitchy. Alright, uh, you want a shield spell. Okay. You want shield, shock, and grass as a staple. The only difference for this would be is if you were an acid dragon type, I could be convinced corrosive touch. And the reason for that is you do extra damage with your acid spells. So 5d4 turns into 5d4 plus 5. Is that amazing? No. But for theme, I would probably do it. And it's still equal to or better than the shocking grasp at that point. They're close enough that I would put it that way. Um, and again, different schools of magic. Not that that matters. Because neither of these have a safe shocking grasp. Neither does the corrosive touch. They're both just hit and do damage and that's it. So... Those are two good spells to start with. One that's lame, uh, one minute per caster level buff. Solid armor buff, because you can't use a shield while you're Megas. Shock and Grass, channel at level two anyway, through your weapon, and it hits if it crits, so does the spell. That's why you want those types of spells. So you will be familiar with all the melee touch attacks, which means touch of fatigue, level zero, infinite use camp. Uh, corrosive touch and or Shock and Grass, which is the level one spell. Level two spell will be Frigid Touch, which is a money spell, which I'll show you that one when we get to level 2, or level 4, because that's when it unlocks. Uh, and then Vampire touches your level 3 spell as your final touch attack, unless they've added another one, which I don't think they have. So that's it. It's really a very narrow list. However, it's all you need. And the fact that you can take a 5d6 spell, channel it through your weapon, and if the weapon crits, which means you crit fishing like a motherfucker, which you want to use like a rapier or a scimitar or a kukri, or anything else that has the highest possible crit rate. And if it crits, if your spell crits, at 5d6 does double damage. That's a lot of damage for a level 1 spell. Do 10d6 to a target, and fuck you. So then you will enjoy stuff like that. Alright, deity selection. It's the same deities, let's take a quick look. On Earth, Otorek, Shellen, Saren Ray, Rovagod, Freyasma, yet yeah, looks Lamashtu. I don't think Lamashtu was there before, but it's nice to see that they're there now. Well, it looks like that Lamashtu has two different weapon choices. Favorite weapons of the Falchion and the Kukri. That's interesting. Uh, Abadar. Odious. Atheus. Clistria. Caden Kalen. This is the one I love the best. He's the, uh, the god of being a dick. He's an alcohol, bravery, and freedom. He, he's the lucky drunk of the drunken hero, the drunken accidental god, because he literally passed the test of being a god, which the mortals can do of the star stone. He passed it while drunk off his ass, and as such, he's now a deity, which is fucking awesome. I like that he has the rapier. The rapier is the, the, the highest crypt in the game. Doesn't mean we're going to find a bunch, but this is almost a rapier. So that works for me. Uh, from here, we're going to be uh, limited to our alignment based on our deity. I'm going to be chaotic good, because usually I am. Murder hobo, chaotic neutral, something around there. Oh, this is where we can change our body types. It looks like we have limited picks here. Faces. Income. There's a shit in here. I used to say. I'm going to fix this. Yeah, I'm angry. A hairstyle, on the other hand, maybe that'll make me feel better. Uh, I'll give this a nice hair color. Fabiola beard. Yeah. Pissy. Alright, uh, primary color. So this is a color coded scheme for your outfit. Uh, we'll make him red. Maybe a fiery poker. I can tell you that right guy. Yellow for that. Because yellow and red for fire. Makes sense to me. Next. I'll take care of it. Forwards! Our time. This is my path. I need to. Damn, son! Are you still here? <laughs> Optimist. I like Optimist. Alright, and again, male, female. You have to choose between your characters, so we're going to call him, um, uh, Boker. Uh, birthday, sure, that's fine. Uh, and we'll win this, one way or the other. So that's our guy. Bam! Two hours, 21 minutes in, guys. We're actually going to do something.
Alt B. I remember that Alt B for the pork shop. Ah, yes. Got some screen tearing. I might not need that. Let me see. Oh, that was bad. Make way, coming through. Fetch a healer quick. <laughs> Be subtle and all, just drop the body on the ground. Fucking bricks. Hey, somebody! We got a wounded fighter. Can we get a healer over here? My, my, would you look at this? But why would you drag a wounded fighter into the middle of the festival square? Couldn't he be carted off somewhere else like, oh, I don't know, an infirmary or an accommodating ditch? So far, I don't like Darren. Darren can suck my left nut from the right side for as I'm concerned. Who's this? Make room, everyone. Step back. Now, what's the matter? What happened to him? Hmm. You hear the stern the one looks voice. Nasty. Who did this to him? You hear the stern voice of an elderly man, but you're so weak you can't even turn your head to look in his direction. Demons, prelate. We found a barely alive outside the walls of Canabris. I love this part of the game too. The the pop up menus here for letting you know a little bit of backstory. If you're curious, you just hover over it and read up what it says. Not necessary, but it does give you a lot of lore. Uh, tells you what's going on about some stuff. Walls, you say? The enemy doesn't usually stray so close to the city. We must fortify the defenses. And you, hold fast. Don't die. We'll see you right. Damn right, Will. I'm the fucking hero of the story. Better save my ass. We'll get you patched up now. But first, you there, guard. Take his weapons. Yeah. Bearing arms is not permitted during the festival. Wounded or not, everyone must abide by the rules. He can get his things back after the festival. And something tells me that that's going to be a horrible, horrible thing. Yes. Oh, inheritor, leader of our troops, the sharpened edge of our blades and the unyielding strength of our armor. Iomade, I beseech you, grant your mercy. Heal his wounds. Great developer of my scrotum sack. Grant me your power. What, what the fuck is that speech, man? The magic envelops you, but your pain lessens only slightly. Uh, items lost. Ever burning torch. Ah, oh, boo! That was my weapon. Uh, water, I won't give up that easily. Let me die. <laughs> Grit your teeth in silence. Ah, uh, water. You will have water as soon as we heal your wounds. I just healed me. What the hell? My powers are not enough here. Someone call for Terendalev. You there. Yes, you. Stop dithering and gobbing and make yourself useful. Go and get Terendalev. I am lost. I lost a heavy mace, potion of cure light wounds, scroll of magic missile, scroll of mage armor, claw bite. What? Light cross. Oh, it must give you a claw bite as a weapon. That's not a weapon, by the way. That's clearly, it's something that will remove from the game. Uh, for those of you that don't know, when you equip your weapons in this game... Um, they take weapon slots, just like your shield slots and your armor and all that fun shit. Um, one of the ways for them to give you a claw attack or a bite attack is they equip you, quote unquote, uh, a claw as a weapon. And it just sits in this weapon slot, just like your, your fist would be if the slot's empty, you'd be punching people. If you grab a dagger, obviously you equip a dagger. If you equip claw or bite, you can see what you get. But the point is, is these shouldn't be in the game like that. It, surely there is somebody else here better suited to running errands. Shut up, Hottie. Go save my life. I need mouth to mouth. It's okay to use tongue. I'll get her. Terendalo. Has anyone seen Terendalo? Oh. Yeah, you with the armor. Go save me. Be quick about it before it's too late. Now, who are you? I don't remember seeing you before, and I have an excellent memory for faces. The old man leans over you. Um, Evoker, I'm a crusader, I came to fight demons, I came to the city on private business. I'm a crusader, I came to fight demons. Fuck it. No, oh, Iomade saved me from green recruits. They come without planning, without preparation, and they die before they even see their first real battle. I don't know whether to laugh or cry at the utter waste of it all. I was trying to, oh, why did you be so mean? You yelled me, you took all my gear, asshole. I don't like this guy. All right, this is my healer. Hear me up. My dear prelate, please, for the sake of the festivities, stop interrogating this poor man. He 
has been through enough already. Go on. I'll take care of him. Yeah. Beat feet, loser. All right, as you wish. You are our protector, and a dragon at that. So I shall defer to your wisdom. Be on your guard. I've been informed he was wounded near Canabras. That means the demons are prowling just outside the walls. And the city is crawling with their spies. Others may be able to relax on this holiday, but not you or I. Not the defenders of this city. Wondering discontentedly, the man walks off. Piss off, loser. Oh, uh, yeah, the, we're talking to a dragon? Who the hell is that? Ted, ter, Terendal? Oh. It's gonna be fun to do my dragon disciple build. Okay. Brother! Yes! <laughs> Give me up, dragon. Give me all that good. I am the raging grip of pain. Cast off the veil of suffering flesh. Let light and life go forth in triumph to repel the skulking shade of death. There. And be able to silver hair woman leans over you. She seems ageless, her face wholly unlined. Uh, but centuries old sadness gleams in her eyes. All the longer she speaks, the stronger her voice becomes. Thank you for helping me. I accept your thanks, but my work is not yet done. Ooh, got me a scale. Are you really a dragon? You don't believe me. Perhaps I should retake my true form and engulf this square with my ice breath to win your trust. <laughs> yes. Pay no mind to my current guise. I appear this way when I walk among the people. I would hamper the festivities if I tried to attend in my true form. I'm betting you the Silver Dragon. Silver Dragon, for those of you that don't know, in D and D lore anyway, I don't know about Pathfinder, but in D and D lore, Silver Dragons are notorious for turning into human shape and living amongst humans. They they love to be like humans and hang out with humans. They're, they're probably one of the most more uh, human friendly dragons there is out there. Uh, who are you? My name is Terendalev. I am the protector of this city. What happened to me? I do not know yet. And that troubles me. I am not entirely sure what the demons did to you. This wound is no ordinary injury, and it was inflicted by no ordinary weapon. I have rid you of your pain and restored your strength. But only time will allow you to heal fully. Can I go? Certainly. But be careful. I have managed to get you back on your feet. But I have not healed you fully. Alas, sooner or later, your pain will return. But do not be discouraged. You will recover, I promise you that. Tomorrow, come to the cathedral and say that you are expected by Terendalev, protector of Canabras. We will find a way to help you. But for now, put this out of your mind and enjoy the festival. They are all too rare in this time of war, and merriment is one of the best medicines. What the hell's going on with the Clement over here? This is kind of trippy. Day of the city. Canvas is the city poised in order. Okay. Uh. Oh, uh, camera. Okay, do the tutorial stuff. All right, we we'll zoom out. W A S D. Just scroll around this way. We turn the camera with the Q and E. Oh, they actually added that to the end. This wasn't in the original version of Pathfinder King. They finally got around to doing it. Let me see. We're getting some screen tearing. I almost think I want to do the um, V sync and stop. Let's do our options. Oh, uh, that graphics, right? Yeah. Very nice. It's always nice when I actually learn something. All right. Uh, we got guards, stranger, citizen, 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 citizen. We got a hand. Oh, interaction. Looks like we got a dummy test. Uh, we got a citizen sweep in. Citizen over here. Citizen, citizen. Citizen, citizen. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, well, first let's do the inventory check. What we got here? Tembo scales. A single silver scale from Tembo's body is one of the ducks and seems to go softly from the game. Oh, thank you for your scale. 
Engrave Lucky Bracers. These bracers can wear Pokemon Luck Bonus and Arm Class. Pokemon Luck Bonus Reflex Wheel and Point 2 Saving Throws. Well, alright. That'd be coming super handy on your uh, Sword Saint build because he's going to be all about Dex and Intelligence and he's going to need every bit of armor he can get. Uh, you can see we're fisting it up right now. Uh, we got a plus three to our attack. Thanks to our weapon finesse, we're actually keying off our uh, finesseable weapons and our fists. Dexterity. Otherwise, we had a goddamn plus one. Um, we have our spells. Notice that we have a toggle on here that spell combat when you shut that shit off. But do that and inspire rage, accept effect. Of extend farther down, so I guess there's something about this that we need to see. Uh, but, spells. Well, uh, those are cantrips. We have a light spell. Hopefully they finally gave us some use of that. Shit. And we have our infinite use um, cantrips. Uh, we use put like acid or cold over here and then our touch of deep because uh, that's all we can channel through our weapon at level 2. We're not there yet. We're planning on it. Uh, for level 1, we have our two uses of either of those spells. We do one of one, or two and zero, two and zero, your choice. Since we're a spontaneous catcher, that's how many level one spells we have today is two. These are our level two spells we have access to. This is our weapon upgrade. Uh, that's a nice plus one to our swing, plus one to our damage, charge ability, uh, coup de gras, and these are not going to be access. But I'll find defensively, I'll put that down there. And cool. Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, we have it's like tests of skill over here. Probably some cheap XP. Uh, as you can see, we have stuff to interact with. People probably to talk to. Amelia. Amelia. Guard citizen. 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 Uh, tab button lights everything up like a Christmas tree. Corgus worm. We need to go talk to him. Okay. Ember. Oh, I'm thinking of our old pet back in Pat, our teammate was talking to Dang. <laughs> He's having a bad day. And the guard doesn't look very happy about it. Don't be a puking bastard. Alright, Susan, Susan. Uh, Darren. That prick. Alright, uh, what is fucking with me? Uh, talk to anybody? Happy City Day! It stood strong for another year. May it stand for a hundred more. Ah, you said it out loud, you dumbass. So many happy faces. Days like this keep our hopes alive. Alright, let's go over here. This. Character interact with objects. You can interact with various objects such as doors and chests by clicking our right mouse button on them. Some special objects have an icon above them. This is also how you talk to characters. Hold tab to highlight all interactive objects and show the interaction icons. So tab, and that's this guy here. Ooh, bullseye. Can you do that 100 paces? Get in, bullseye. Let's <laughs> drink. Journal, when you quest a page, you'll see the location at the top of the game's main. Green. All information about your quest is used as long as the journal. Don't press J. Or left off button on the message on the top of the screen. I don't see anything there, so let's press J. Yeah. Like so. Sample the special festival drink, throw the dart at the target, hit the mannequin. Okay. Festival dart. Alright. Uh, where's our forest corner? Yes, yes, happy city day. And now, step away, please. I do not wish for Horgus Worm to be next seen next to you. Oh, well, fuck you too, then, Ken. Citizen, citizen. Okay. And what do you say? So, happy city day, good people. Spare a coin for a hungry belly. Citizen over here. I'm not drunk, you're drunk. <laughs> such a drunk thing to say. Citizen, citizen, citizen. Where is that booze? I must be drinking. What the hell is she doing? Cutting something. Bringing a bow. Can't tell. 
India. Everybody's letting their hair down. Everybody's drink, having a good time. But the demon spies never let up. So demon spies never let up. So that means no fun for me. Okay, so she must be Citizen, manage these health. Curl, Sila. How are you? Did Tarandalov help you? Oh, this is the lady that ran fully armored up to help us out. And Eldori. Ooh, and Eldori. Been Crusader five whole days already. I love it. Let's see if he's going to be granting the. I like how they. I like this now. That's very nice. Uh, Curl. Uh, they should let us off to enjoy the festivities. Instead, we're digging bitches and training day in, day out. Great me, speech. Drink me, especially when the city's footing the bill. What do you say? Another round? Yeah. What the oh, what the fuck is that? People are turning into moss. Fight the demons. Sure thing. Yeah. Take this. Best crossbow I've got. The person who made it said it could pierce the hide of a demon lord. Even. Good luck. Try not to get eaten now. Having been drawn out by Turbo Worm and wrestling it with countless times. Right, I got a weapon. Wanted. Oh, I like the animation of Bodhi. That is not something we want to try to take out anytime soon. A mortal gnat snaps its jaws at the Lord of Locusts. Okay, then. Behold, Iomane. Behold the death I saw. Shit, we just fell down the chasm. Hmm. Welp, uh, that's the thing that just happened. And we didn't complete our quest either. We the only did two of the three things. To Rendeleb, the defender of Canabras fell in battle. Hardly surprising, as she had to fight the demon lord Discari himself. He willed the land to part and swallow all who dared to stand in his way. But the war was still far from over. Okay. So this must be where we're going. Let's do a quick save. Okay, uh, we got anything besides that crossbow? Fuck me. Wow. I'll show the way. I was kind of hoping that they'd give me at least a melee weapon. Maybe something fell down in the chasm with us. Uh. Now that looks like it's gonna up. I can't see the shit. Bodies. Oh, people.
A small woman with messy brown hair winces in pain, uttering a string of curses through her clenched teeth. She is pinned to the ground by a couple of weighty boulders. Hey, hey, stay with me. You actually got pretty lucky. You fell down into a black hole. But at least you're not on your own. You've got a great companion. Everything's going to be just fine. Tell me something. Can you feel your legs? The young woman in night summer studies the rocks intently, clearing, clearly trying to work out how to move them. I feel them all right. One say no to a little less feeling in them. My ankle's killing me, but my back seems to still be in one piece. My head, too. That's all that matters. Now, we're going to... Hey! Fancy meeting you down here. You're the one that Terendal appealed today, right? You aren't injured, are you? Will you help me get her out from under the boulders? During the course of the game, you will have to apply your skills in many different situations. Frequently, you will have to make a skill check during dialogue. Here, for example, we are trying to help Sila fetch Nevia from beneath the rubble. The result of such checks determines how events subsequently pan out. Such a check is usually performed by the character with the highest bonus in the appropriate skill. It says, usually. Be real clear on this, guys. Sometimes... They will default and make you do it. At least if that's the way it was in Kingmaker. Sometimes you, as the team leader, especially if it's like a diplomacy check, you were the guy because you're the team leader. So that's why your persuasion is always important. Uh, we have an athletics check. And then if you hover over this, it will literally tell you more information. Like you have a plus five to athletics. It's DC 12, which means you have to roll on a 1D20. You'd have to get a seven or better. Pretty easy for us to do. Knowledge world 12. We don't have, have to rely on root strength for this. Try to assign something to use as a lever. So again, by being a big old smarty pants, but notice how we're not very smart. We have a knowledge world of plus one. We need an 11 or better. And then evil, I don't help anyone for free. Pay up or stay stuck under the rubble. Boy, evil run on this game is going to be fun as shit. Athletics. Hold on. Uh, well, we're going to get you out from under there. Don't fail the check. Thank you. Uh... Okay, we already did that one. All right, uh, failed. <laughs> Great. You have to work hard to get the wounded woman off the rebel at last. The night stops to catch breath and wipes the sweat from her brow. You suck. Ah, damn it all. I think it's broken. Oh, well, I've had worse. I'll just make myself a splint out of something. Thanks for the help. I wouldn't have lasted long on my own stuck under there. I'm a Nevia Tirabaid of the Eagle Watch. I was overseeing security at the Festival Square. I thought maybe spies or demon worshippers might have something nasty planned. What actually happened, though? Now that, I did not see coming. I don't think anyone could have been prepared for that. Fishing a piece of twine from her pocket and she gets to work. Uh, another little comment for the devs. Not that you guys are doing a great job. If you're going to have a uh, text like this, uh, it honestly would be better to have the text that's not her speaking at the end. For people like me that try to read along... I would say this out loud to my audience, and then I'm interrupting her awesome, literally amazing voice work uh, for this next part, which would be silly. So if at all possible, it would be nice to have that information at the back end of any speech that they have, so you can just read it afterwards. Just saying. Uh, result of skill check, we failed, which means we didn't get any XP. Damn it. Well, I'm Sila, paladin by the grace of Iomade. I crossed the whole continent to come to Mendev and fight demons, and well... I've been fighting for a while now. I don't even want to think what might be happening up there in the city. Canabres has lost the protection of Terendelev, and of the Wardstone too, looks like. It's a relic without equal. It was placed here personally by Iomade's Herald, with the Goddess's blessing. I really wanted to go see it, to pray before it. But there's no point worrying about a stone when there are people dying in the streets. We don't know what the wardstone is yet. They've yet to add that text. Yeah, things are looking grim enough, but don't lose heart. Wardstone or no, dragon or no, Canabrace will never give in. Simple as. Well, we've introduced ourselves. What about you? Hmm. Seek my fortune, love my destiny. A traveler, my name is Evoker. Uh, came here to fight the Abyss. I'm a scholar. Yeah, arcane. I mean, I'm arcane bloodline, right? I'm all about my fucking magic. I'm a scholar. Came here to see the world with my own eyes. <laughs> Didn't you pick a great spot to do your research? <laughs> I know what you scholar types are like. 
When it comes to your intellectual curiosity, you just don't see danger. And in the world wound, we got more danger than anywhere else. You should be glad we still got scholars who want to come here to study our enemies, and not just stay home to count the spots on butterflies. Uh, now then, I'll hobble my way out of here somehow. The city ain't far, only 30 paces or so. That's if you're going straight up, of course. I'm afraid we're gonna have to go the long way round. To summarize, there are three of us with five working legs, three pairs of decent hands, two clear heads, and one made of wood. <laughs> That's mine. Underground monsters beware! <laughs> Anevia, you stay behind us. You're in no fit state to fight. If we do come up against anything, the two of us will try to manage on our own first. Well, onward! May the good deities lead us back to the open sky soon. Alright, now your party has several characters. Select one of them, click on the portrait. Use the appropriate key, which we haven't bound yet. To select several characters, give them all one command. Either drag a box around them while holding L and B, or click the portrait of the desired characters with Shift plus L and B. Select your characters, press blah blah blah. Uh, right, cool beans. So, you basically do like that. Can't make the so, demons she's wait. just going to follow us, I guess. Uh, let's do an inventory. She has banded mail. Never burning torch, which I'm going to take from her. So I can have me at least a weapon. And she's rocking currently a long sword and a heavy shield. And she even has a short bow. So I'm going to put this in my slot too. We're going to uh, sort by price and descending order is a typical thing for me. I can't equip that, so that's just a generic thing. Okay, so at least I have the ability to switch to that. And I will do so by doing this. Bam. No, that's at least something. It's considered a weapon uh, as far as you know, the game is concerned. So you see, it's not finessable, so I'm using my strength. Uh, but it won't provoke attacks of opportunity, and it will do a little bit of fire damage with it. And I can increase the deck damage and the, the attack bonus and the damage by one by buffing it with my little ability here. Again, that's not amazing, but it's what it is. Uh, as far as team formation, I usually do this one. Phalanx formation, that's cute. Star formation, wow, they did, they did a really good job. Circle hammer formation, interesting. And of course, they probably have an auto... Uh, Pilot I can one handle it. Drag them wherever you want. Make your own formation. All right, we're looking for shit, guys. Not just bodies. We gotta get the hell out of here. And off we go. Oh, I like that. The see-through of the wall thing. That was one of the downsides. I will say a Pathfinder keymaker. Containers. You find a lot of objects that contain loot. Let's pause this real quick. Um. Uh. Contain loot enemy corpses, boxes, barrels, and many other environment uh, elements. To see what's inside a container, approach it and interact with it as with any other interactive object. Yep, yep. Look, hold on. Put all the confiscated weapons in this chest. Take a look. Maybe your thing survived the fall. Yeah, it's not what we're talking. Give me my weapons. Deal. Acquired a new piece of equipment to uh, for your main character to equip it. Open the inventory by choosing the eye. Eye right, for inventory. All right, now. I also have a cloak, she's unidentified, uh, I can give her back her torch, uh, flail, mm. that is not my weapon, uh, do I equip shit that I don't know about, no, not in this game, you're fucking crazy, let's get that flail though, oh, I don't want to do that, no, no, there we go, a little glitchy. That's okay. It is a beta after all. I'll show the way. Oh, nice. oh, I love the fucking scenery. Hey there. There's there? Yeah, a nice lady. Find a pair of this young half elf woman is torn and stained with blood, dust, and dirt. However, she holds herself with such dignity that you would be forgiven for thinking you were at a high society party. Not in the dank catacombs under the city. Her fingers grip her rapier hilt with confidence, ready to draw it at a moment's notice. At her feet lies a dead body so mutilated that at first glance it's hard to tell if it's 
animal or human? Ooh, that's not good. Relax, friend. We're, we're not demons or cultists. Don't poke my eye out with that thing, all right? We fell down here during the attack. I'm Sila, that's Anevia, and this is our new friend. We're looking for a way back to the surface. Really? I'm so ever glad to hear it. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Camellia. I was also in the square when... When... I can scarcely believe it. How did all those demons get into the city? I thought... Naively, it now seems. That the Wardstone protected us from attack. And Terendalev... I can't wrap my head around it. I mean, he could withstand a strike from a demon lord, not even Terendalev. I can't argue with that. We're fortunate to be alive. Albeit underground. Daskari himself has come to Canabras. There's no mistaking that ugly mug. Durandalev tried to fight him, but what could she do against a mere deity? Even the Wardstone was no help. Our city used to be protected by powerful forces, but now? <sighs> Nevia shakes her head. We've seen how powerless they truly are. Henceforth, we shall have no one but ourselves to rely on, I suppose. Camellia finishes Nevia's thoughts uh, with ruthless precision. Uh, what happened to this poor man? Who is he? I don't know. He must have been in the square when disaster struck. I tried to revive him, but he was already dead, sadly. He didn't get these wounds from the fall. Be on your guard. Whatever killed him likely hasn't gone far. Hang on. I think I know him. His name's Aravashniel, the egghead from the library. He was a good lad, even if he was kind of stuck up. May his soul rest in peace. Oh, oh, tell me more about yourself. Who am I? Just an ordinary citizen who decided to take a stroll through the square on the day of the festival. But that's not what you wish to know, is it? You most likely wish to know whether I'll be a burden should you ask me to join your group. No need to worry about that. I can assure you that I am skilled with a rapier. And I also possess some knowledge of magic. Hmm. She touches the polished snake skull amulet that hangs around her neck. Do you want to join us? Certainly. Survivors should stick together. It's only sensible. Who knows what else could be prowling about in these caves? She's a magus like us. We need to keep moving. There must be a way back to the surface somewhere around here. That's right. It would be the height of foolishness to survive a demon attack only to perish under a pile of rubble. Let's see if this poor bloke has anything useful on him. Not to sound like a heartless brigand or nothing, but we kind of need all the supplies we can get right now. A nice chunk of XP right there. Using abilities. Companion Camellia has the ability to cure light wounds. Use it. Click Companion Camellia's portraits. Click icon or spell. Cure light wounds. In the abilities bar, click one, uh, left mouse button to the Companion Camellia's portrait to heal her. Healing restores lost hit points. So this one can be healed. Here we go. Roots and bodies. Okay. Uh, she is What's a magus like us. I Hell to. Wonder. Oh, she's a different kind of magus. What does that say? Spirit weapon enchantment. What is that? Inspire rage. Let me shut that shit off. She does have a large person as a spell, though. I'm going to put those over here. So she has light. Ah, she's a clerical type. Because she has guidance or a pallet or a pallet. Uh, the, the druid. She has a large person and she has cure light wounds. So it sounds like a cleric or something. So maybe a war priest. Blue blood. Battle spirit. She's a spirit hunter. Well, all right. Feats she has. Open finesse. She's got some nice dexterity. Keen senses, elven immunities. Oh, she's an elf. I mean, you see the point of years. My bad. Cool. We know about her. Paladin. Human skilled, of course. She has the smite evil. Mm -hmm. Pickpocket. What the hell are you doing there, Paladin? Strength of 16, con of 14, wisdom 13, charisma 15. Not bad. 
Decent stats. At least it does not dink us around with some stupid ass characters like they did in the, the first damn game. So that's just straight up crazy. Um, let me put her two abilities down here like this. And that one as well. And what is this battle spirit and shit? Object found. Okay. Here we go again. Uh. Not look like I'm getting my uh, arcane object. By the way, we'll see this one way or the other. Hmm. Maybe it's because I didn't cast a spell yet. Uh. All right. Um. I'll we can heal. Uh, characters like they said. So for her, we can climb that. There. there we are. And can we heal her? Kind of hoping that she's fucking something for the team. All right, I still got my light spell on me, right? Yeah, for six minutes of change. Sounds good. Yep, here we go. All right, we need to do turn base mode. Press T to enable or disable the turn base mode. Okay, so this is where we can do just like quick ass shooting shit. So young giant centipedes were nasty in the original game. We don't have much in the way of health here. Uh, she's already fatigued. Um, what we're gonna do is move stuff around for her. And Open your heart can... to me. What does this do? Battle spirit. Oh, she's a shaman. Surround herself with the spirit of battle. Remember, rounds a day with three plus your charisma modifiers. Rounds do not be consecutive. That's why it's only four. Uh, pass on that. Uh, you can buff yourself up, though. How about we charge that shit? They will break against our resolve. Now, here's how we find out about the individual bad guys in this game. <laughs> Combat begins. The game is paused. The pause is convenient to give orders to your characters. To pause or unpause the game, press space. Are to order your character to attack, select them and click R and B on an enemy. Your enemies are highlighted in red, your allies in green. A stippled line connects a character to their current target. Uh, a timer over a character's head counts down the time until the next round and fixes the character's current scheduled action. Cool. All right. Uh, so this character here, Camellia, uh, should come over here and give me help. But you see how it's the surprise round because we have a move action or a standard action is our only choice. Um, I'm going to have her cast guidance on herself. I love the new magic effects though. Fuck yeah. Uh, can she charge? She can normally, but she can't right now. And she's also fatigued, that's why she can't. So let's have her just. Oh, uh... uh, by the way, if you right click, see how we have five foot? And we have move a full 20 feet. Uh, if you need to do, you right click, you go back to 5 feet, you see how it's less. This allows you to avoid uh, attacks of opportunity. It doesn't matter if you're getting outside of the range. So if you need to like backpedal away from motherfucker to cast a spell, you do the 5 foot movement as your move action. Just do that, and then do your standard action casting the spell. If you're out of the range, of course. If you need to move, you right click again, now you're back to full movement. And again, since this is the surprise round, all we're getting is the ability to move or attack. There's nothing within attack range, so we're just going to come over here and be a dick to these guys. Okay. That was a weird one. Let me pick the ground. Oof. That was nasty. Stop eating my face. Ooh. Sneak attack. That must be Anivia doing her thing. Uh, let's get her up and over here now and go for their up. hearts. There we go. A little delayed stab, but whatever. Good guys always win. Uh, I'll wait in my turn. Okay, I'm gonna do a five foot stutter step to get the hell away from these things. I've taken damage. Is it this one? No. How 
do I end my turn? It will end turn. Your turn, hon. Huh? A little bit of a delay light. that they got going on here for when stuff dies. That's okay. Uh, we did pick up gear, and I don't like this weapon. As much as I like this one, because I'm a better attack with the finessable weapon. So we'll do that. A C's fine with the rapier. Cold iron rapier, no less. And a buckler, no less. And she's got chain shirt Jesus and an amulet. It's unidentified. She's got all kinds of shit. I need that potion, though. Gimme. She's got shield of faith potion. Yeah, we'll definitely need that here for too long. Okay. Quick save that mess. All right. And off we go. Right on. Oh, what is that thing? Mothra! Jesus, that thing's huge. Giant fly. Yo. Oh, that's a good art design, guys. Okay, uh, evoker. Uh, while we're at distance, uh, what I'm going to do is shoot at it with some hit. Okay. The reason I'm doing that is because the touch attack is usually easier to hit. Scroll down and show you this here. So this gives you a chance to see what's happening here. So we uh, initiative check 14, 11, 7, 6. And it looks like they put it in order. Thank God. Uh, it used to be that all, the numbers were all random as fuck and you had to figure out where you were in the order of things. They went highest to lowest. Thank you, Des, for that. Evoker, that's me. I'm the best. Seal is next. Camellia is next. And then the fly finally gets their turn. And of course, our fourth companion uh, doesn't show up on the initiative because she's not controlled. Um, I did one damage, one D3 acid damage, the minimum, but it did a hit. Dexterity base, flat-footed, because we surprised the fucker, so he doesn't get any of his dexterity, so we have no idea what his dex actually is. He's straight flat-footed, so it's easy to hit him. Uh, and then I'm going to come over here besides. Kind of get that flank on. Okay. She can't charge again because she is fatigued, as you can see by her portrait here. It's an annoying feature for her. Uh, but she definitely needs to come on over here and flank this fucker as well. Cool. Now. Oh, sneak attack. I'm not sure why the posters just showed up. Go away. Why are you here? Uh, whatever. Anyway. Uh, tab. Alright, where's our map? I'll go that way. Oh, hey there, buddy. Shot. Hmm. In the old game, it used to be like when the stuff was in range like this but it hadn't seen you yet, you could queue up an attack. Shoot it off, and then the fight would start. Let's see if it works still the same way. First comes, first served. Now that should have taken my turn from this initiative round. She's, she's pinned by everybody, I think. Glitching out on us. Hmm. Okay, there we go. Uh, we had that same issue with Pathfinder Kingmaker. They, they've yet to get the turn base perfect. So if you ever have an issue where you get locked up like that, just hit this twice, it'll pause it, and then go back to being turn base mode if you hit it the second time. That's what we're in right now. Uh, we're gonna have her just come over here and charge it. You are today's sacrifice! With time. Spitting giant centipede. No, that's not good. New models on the centipedes, though. Sneak attack. Flat footed. She is just a baller with that shot. I love having her on the team. Got 
goods. All those things. Alright, what do we pick up? We have Brace of Armor plus one. Cloak. Won't do the identifier stuff yet. I've taken damage. I want to actually use this potion. Okay, I healed a little. Got a light mace. Oh, I got a masterwork dagger, no less. Oh, no wonder I'm swinging at a plus four. Yeah. Good on me. Alright, braces of armor. That'd be useless for her. Same with her. Well, better than zero, I suppose. And I think my spell. What's going on here? Let's actually buff up again one more time. Man. Press uh, backspace. You can select all your team. In case that didn't come up already. Uh, I got another giant fly, and I think I got another acid splash for his face. Spinning giant centipedes here too. Shit. I got whipped. Nice shot. She is money, man. She is clearly the MVP, and I just took seven goddamn damage. See, look. Go here and kill this thing. <laughs> Weird animation. Alright. Anywho. Got some goods. We just picked up a fork ton. Mmm. Should we use it for potions or scribe scrolls? Oh, okay. That's cool. Uh, I need a heal. A four. That's not good enough. There we go. All right. And this video has been three hours long. Um, I think we're going to save here, fellas. I'm going to hard save as well. And save that like that. With that, my name is Brother Mead. Please like, subscribe, comment down below. Tell me what you guys think of this new game. I'm loving the freaking uh, color scheme, man. No, oh, they finally put in some effort. Can't make the in, demons uh, wait. These maps. Uh, models are a little wonky, but I guess you're never really zooming in that much to see the characters all that much. Anyway, um, Nevia clearly is our MVP right now, even with her gimped leg. Um, we're doing well. Uh, as far as XP is concerned, uh, I don't think we could be much higher. I never completed that... Um, Bay of the City, get the mannequin. So again, I, I probably screwed that up already. But if I would have done all those things and probably drank the uh, drink last, maybe that was the trick, or I was just taking too goddamn long, probably. Um, but uh, I could have completed that. Maybe I would have had enough XP to level up at this point. Character-wise, though, I'm at a 1275. She's at 525. She's at 1275. So literally, she's behind. The two of us are actually getting more XP, probably because we're doing more skill check stuff, I'm guessing. That seems weird that she's actually way behind us, though, because they both joined. Actually, she joined after, right? I wonder if she's getting XP for the kills. Oh! Well, that sucks. Because that means she ain't going to get shoot for the longest time. Huh. Well, something to figure out next time. With that, though, again, like I said, my name is Brother Me. Please like, subscribe, comment down below. So what do you guys think of this game? Do you want to see more of it? Do you want me just to do a deep dive into each of the classes or subclasses? How do you guys want me to handle this? I don't want to get too far into the game. I don't want too many spoilers. We'll probably want to get out of this area, I'm guessing. The underground Caves of Canaveras, just because that's probably a like tutorial area. Get to level 2, maybe level 3, and stop there. With that, though, I'll see you guys soon. Bye now.